The following podcast may contain adult language and an abundance of salt. <laughs> so get ready, nerds, because <laughs> we're talking the pilot episode of Farscape. Welcome, everybody, and thank you for joining us in this episode of the Salty Nerd Podcast. I'm joined, as always, by my fantastic panel of nerds. We're talking Farscape today. This is Matthew Kadish's month to pick. I'm joined, as always, Matt Vader is here. Very disappointed. Welcome, sir. Kadish, what <laughs> have you done to us? <laughs> what is happening right now? Dude, our chat for our watch party was on fire last night. <laughs> no. Who's responsible for this? <laughs> <laughs> and we, dropped, we, we, we threw you under the bus. So fast. <laughs> he's got a look on his face. I said, he's not happy with us. So they right were now. like, who, who picked this month? And I said, Kadish. Yeah. And they were like, literally the next response was, oh. <laughs> <laughs> we understand. We get it now. Jude is also here. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? When did you watch this? Did you watch this earlier this week? Uh couple days ago okay i can't wait to hear your reaction okay because i don't know like <laughs> if it's campy enough to be in your vein or not i'm curious to find, we'll out. find out matthew kadish is here as well the man behind the curtain welcome sir i've never been more disappointed in my co-host <laughs> sorry ever in my life uh this is a classic science fiction series that uh changed the landscape for sci-fi uh in the late 90s early 2000s it's got a very hardcore fan base and uh, admittedly, it does start off a tad bit rough, but um, by the time you get into season two, it's really found its footing and it becomes amazing. <laughs> that is something that we do have to say, because we did mention that. Yeah. Like, Nick, Pre -pre Nick immediately, the first thing Nick said was like, pilots are always terrible. Yeah. yeah. Like, for, especially for sci-fi. Pilots are never good. So mm -hmm. I will give you that. It might get better. We'll see. I'm but we're going to have a lot of fun with oh, this. Oh, I'm going to roast you so hard. <laughs> <laughs> Your knockoff Klingons and shit. <laughs> All right. Um, so yeah, I, I we'll just get into it real quick. Um, this is not not a show for me, according to this episode. If I I think the reason why I've never seen this show is because I had watched the first episode and oh, I was really? like I was like nah. Like I, I remember the puppets yeah. and the weird Yankee CGI and the characters were a little bit goofy and I was like I don't think I need to watch this show. When did this premiere? 97? No, no, this was 1999 okay. and this was a Australian New Zealand production that uh was partnered with the Jim Henson um studios. So Jim Henson Studios basically did all the aliens and prosthetics and all that stuff and the only American in the uh cast is Ben Browder. Uh, everyone else is Australian or New, New Zealand. Mm. And this series was basically picked up by the sci-fi channel back when it was sci-fi instead of Sifi. And, um, and it was like one of their like big, like, you know, original series. And uh, it eventually, but like they treated it, they gave it the, the Firefly treatment in the sense that like they were very inconsistent in when it was airing. Mm. And so um, it made it very hard for people to like, you know, get caught up on the, on the full seasons. And in a weird way that created an even more hardcore fan base for it. Cause the people who really liked it would like sit there and like, you know, like map out like when, when, when the show is coming off back. <laughs> like, exactly. Exactly. Because they, they'd go off on like these weird hiatuses for like months on end. And it was just because the sci-fi channel like had other stuff they wanted to show. And so like Farscape always got kind of pushed to the side yeah. and that eventually led to the show getting canceled in the fourth season. And they had a five season arc planned out. And so like the fourth season ended on like this big cliffhanger. And then they announced that like, oh, you know, the show's not coming back and the fan base nearly rioted. And uh, they created this whole like um, save Farscape um, movement. <laughs> uh, and they were able to use that to raise enough funds, the Jim Henson company did, in order to create a a mini series called the peacekeeper wars which wrapped up all the storylines and so like this is a complete season or like, like a complete a complete series um, by the time you go from this episode to the final episode of the peacekeeper wars so uh, there is closure to it thank god that's good um but uh it, it took a long windy road to get there mm. and it's four seasons it's so it's 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 really nice you know and i know we're gonna talk some shit here but it is really cool when a series has a beginning and middle and they get an end yeah because we've all had multiple shows where they just get well, canceled like, mid yeah. mid story and you're like what what happened yeah. when i see i it's see firefly really, yeah. and i'm like oh man like they yeah. got a movie but the, i don't think the movie was a it's like, like movie the, wasn't great like yeah. the original Battlestar galactica that was the one thing i loved about the the, the reprise that they made mm -hmm. is that we got an end yes mm -hmm. 
we got a we got a full story in the. What, I've never seen that seasons. show. Oh, it's great. Oh, yeah. it's so good. Really? But, um, yeah. I think I'm gonna pick that for my mom. Okay. It's really hard to narrow it down to four though, because yeah. uh, there's so many characters. Mm. Yeah, but um, Farscape. <laughs> I, I, this, this is this is my first watch through this, and yeah, uh, yeah I, I I had zero interest in this when, I, when it came out for whatever I, reason. Yeah, I knew uh, I knew it was there, but you know I was I was believe it or not I was kind of in like career mode at this point. It was like I was I was too busy trying to get promoted and stuff at work, shaking hands and, and, and kissing babies. And, you know, and I was you know you know when I wasn't at work, I, I had a really fun group of friends that we hung out with a lot and we weren't watching Farscape. Yeah. You know, but. I am um, immediately when I'm watching this for whatever reason, I, I, I'm not saying it is, but immediately I get, I get knockoff vibes. Oh, there is hardcore. It's there. just very Jim Henson. Yeah. And I just don't think that I'm well, can, into that. Can you guys give there's, me some context for Jim Henson? What else is he doing? The Muppets. Sesame Street. Oh, literally Kermit, the Muppets? Yeah. Kermit the Frog. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were making jokes. No. Oh, oh shit. When I said, <laughs> where, when did we Dark get into the Muppets? When we get into the Muppets, I was being 100% oh, I serious. I thought you were joking. I no. thought you were being a dick about it. Not at all. Like, oh, look, there's Muppets here. Like, <laughs> oh, shit. He's actually the guy who yeah. makes Muppets. No, no, no. So, like, Jim Henson had passed away by the yeah. time this show came. But the Jim Henson Company, mm -hmm. right. which, which is, like, the studio that makes, like, Sesame Street and all yeah. that stuff. They're the ones who partnered up with Rockne S. O'Bannon, who was the creator of the show. And they did all the aliens. They did all the uh, creature effects, all the prosthetics and stuff like that for this, this series. Yeah, they look real Muppety. Yeah. Because they, they are. Because <laughs> they are. <laughs> well, one of the cool things about this show is, is the, the creature effects. Because, like, you know, at the time, mm -hmm. all you had was Star Trek. And it was just, like, different forehead prosthetic right. of the week. Mm -hmm. Whereas <laughs> with this show, like, like they go weird. Like, yeah, they, like they're, weird. they're, like, tons of, like, really unique and interesting, like, alien designs. Like, it feels alien. And I mm -hmm. like the, the puppetry aspect of it because it reminds me of, like, the original Star Wars where, like, you know, it was basically, it was puppets, mm -hmm. you know. And so, like, um, I, I don't know. Like, I just feel like it, give, yeah. it gives the series a unique feel that it hasn't been replicated. Just, just really quick, though. You, you, know, you say Star Wars had puppets in it. Well, it had Yoda. But you know what? I've never once looked at Yoda and, and felt like Frank Oz's hand was up Yoda's ass. Yeah, controlling that's, it. that's a weird thing, he looks, right? He looks fucking real to me. It, yeah. and maybe that's just my seven-year-old bias or 10-year-old bias from when I was watching it. I, I have but to the this same day, exact thought. To this day, I still look at Yoda and I go, that was a pretty good puppet. Yeah, but, but I you mean, know, like, but, like but this these, didn't these have things. A, these things look like they're like plastic. rejects from fucking Dark Crystal. <laughs> this didn't. Yeah, th this didn't <laughs> have know? a Star Wars budget. This was no. a Dark Crystal budget. I get that, it. Like, yeah. yeah, and and I think that there's something kind of fun. Like one of the main characters of the show, Rigel the the Thirteenth. Uh, he's like this little toad puppet mm -hmm. and he's like one of my favorite characters in, in this entire series and it's just weird you know, you know because like he is a, a muppet basically mm -hmm. but he has such interesting like characteristics and and he's he's funny and it, it's just once you get to know the characters like right. they they kind of like begin to stand out on their own so i will say the first episode is very dark crystal puppetry um and Kadish and I actually watched the next episode as well, and it actually is markedly better. Oh, it is? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I actually enjoyed the second episode. The first episode, I was like, I don't know if I like this. Mm -hmm. I really don't think I like any of the puppets. Um, but story-wise, I think I, I think it's good. I think it's going to be good. And then we watched the next one, and I was like, that was really enjoyable. Oh, yeah, okay, cool. yeah, the <clears throat> story-wise, so like basically this – the show was conceived as the anti Star Trek. They wanted to make something that was very different from Star Trek. And so basically it's uh, Ben Browder's character, um, uh, John Crichton gets uh, during a space flight um, experiment, he gets flung through a wormhole into like a vast, you know, area of space that's really far away from earth. And he meets uh, a kind of like prison ship full of like colorful characters who were like formerly, um, like imprisoned by this group called the Peacekeepers, which is like an evil organization. Space Nazis. Yeah. And uh, so basically he- Not a peaceful group. <laughs> yeah, he aligns himself with these escaped prisoners to try to figure out like, you know, the landscape of this new universe he's in and how to get home and stuff like that. And what's interesting is like each character has like their own motivations and like they betray each other and they, you know, help each other. And it, it's, it's always kind of like a crapshoot as to like what side they're going to land on from episode to episode. 
but one of the interesting things about this show is that, so in season one, it's kind of a very episodic TV show in the mm -hmm. sense that the first half of the season is, is very much kind of like the, the episode of the week type mm -hmm. thing. And then as you get into the later half of the season, uh, it starts becoming more serialized. And this was one of the shows that kind of like um, brought serialized storytelling to the science fiction genre on TV. And uh, by the time you get into seasons two and three, and then definitely in four, um, you're having these like season long story arcs that are like really compelling. And the show also gets really weird, <laughs> you know, but in a, in a good way. So um, th the first season is a little bit rough, but um, towards the end of the month, when we're going to like the, the penultimate episode and the finale and stuff like that, um, it, uh, you start to see where the show is going and, uh, it ends on the big cliffhanger and it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. All right, guys. I, I can't wait for the end, end of this month. <laughs> you know what, dude, be, I will say amazing. by the end of this month, when I end up liking this show, I'm, that's okay. I'm going to be blown away. You, you can like this show. I'm, we'll it's, see. It's, it's, All right, guys. Who's next? I, I kind of hope we do. I am. Is it you? Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going <laughs> to <laughs> shitty show you're going to make us watch. That's oh, fun. no, um, it's going to be a classic. All right, folks, we're going to take a quick break and we're going to get back. We're going to break down this episode scene by scene and talk about all the cool stuff. All right, stay tuned. Welcome back, everybody. Hey, if you like what we do here and you want to help support us, head over to saltynerdstore.com and grab some of our merch. We have some really great T-shirts there that are designed by Matthew Kadish and myself. My favorite is the official logo that uh, also Matt Vader is rocking today. Oh, you're wearing your sex machine T-shirt. That's awesome. Yeah, we also have that too. Head over there, type in salty in the checker counter, get 10% off your purchase and help support the podcast. We get uh, some money back every time you buy a shirt and we'd love to see you too. So if you buy one, you're wearing it, take a quick selfie and send it over to us and we'll promote it on uh, the Twitters and all that kind of stuff. All right. Farscape, season one, pilot. Take it away. Premiere. Premiere. Premier. Is there a difference between a pilot and a premiere? Yes. Mm -hmm. Premiere is fancier. Oh. <laughs> Premiere is French. <laughs> Premiere puts their pinky out. <laughs> Premiere. Think Premier. of it this way. A pilot is a cigarette. Oh, a okay. premiere is the long cigarette is a, holder. Is a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> Give me another cigarette, you whore. What's the matter with you? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing at all. <laughs> He's just over like, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> like, who are these people? Yeah, <laughs> as soon as we start talking French, it gets all weird. <laughs> it's a bunch of garbage. <laughs> garbage. <laughs> <laughs> you okay, Jim? Uh, that's an inside joke. Did you just spit your coffee out? No, I I took a drink and I didn't. It's on your I know, shirt. I know. I took a drink and it was still horizontal, but I went to set it down for some reason. Horizontal. <laughs> that's how they French drink coffee. <laughs> like whores. <laughs> Horizontally. <laughs> All right, take it away, Gadish. All right, Farscape, season one, episode one, entitled Premiere. <laughs> Brilliant. <Sorry. laughs> they get dude sideburns. There's, there's, yeah. no, there's no word for pilot in New Zealand. Oh, sorry. <laughs> All right, so IASA astronaut and scientist commander John Crichton and his best friend Douglas D.K. Knox propose a theory that a manned spacecraft can overcome atmospheric friction to increase its velocity to previously unrecorded speeds by using a planet's natural gravity. Farscape 1 is a module designed by Commander Crichton to test this theory, and Crichton is nervous as the time for the launch of the space shuttle approaches. His father, Jack Crichton, is a legendary astronaut and a tough act to follow, but as Jack gives his son a puzzle ring originally given to Jack for good luck by Soviet cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin, he tells John that he will get his chance to be his own kind of hero. The launch goes well. However, at the moment of critical apogee, Commander Crichton is ordered to abort. An electromagnetic wave is fast approaching Crichton's position. With no time to react as the wave hits, Farscape 1 is swallowed by a wormhole and sent spiraling across the universe to points unknown. Those darn wormholes. His, um, <laughs> his dad... Uh -huh. I feel like he's every 80s dad oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, ever. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, for sure. There's something very familiar about him. He almost kind of looks like the He's, been, he's the, been in other stuff. Has he? Yeah. There's some, he I don't know what, but I, I recognize he, him too. You know what I think it might be? He almost looks like the new Captain Pike, uh, Anson Mount. Kind of the same He energy. has a little bit of an Anson Mount energy yeah. to him. Okay. With the hair. He's got the high hair. Salt and pepper high hair. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's he's something. He's like Anson Daddy. Anson Daddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I want Daddy Mount. Daddy Mount. <laughs> Daddy Mount. <laughs> 
<laughs> I feel like he's like in a soap opera or something. Something. I don't know. He yeah. looks so familiar. I don't know where I've seen him he before. He has an evil twin. Something, yeah. He probably plays a really good bad guy. I just <laughs> I just really like his best friend. The dude with the sideburns? The dude with the sideburns. I do too. Those are, I, I kind of miss sideburns. <laughs> Bring them back. No, I, they don't really go with the beard. I'd have to like, have to like cut them out. That would be weird. You have like a mutton chop, mutton right? chop and a, a goatee with the- I with can't the, grow sideburns. Yeah. Nothing grows past here. It's just fuzz. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know. Someday you'll, someday you'll be a real man. Maybe. <laughs> I got a drip. Join the beard club. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck you. Uh, (laughs) Man. I don't know. That's it. Where'd they get this canned footage from the space? Oh, this is great. This is, uh, what is it? We can't can't say NASA. It's not NASA. But we can rip off. IASA. (laughs) IASA. What does that stand for? It it stands for International Air and Space uh, Association, which it's the same thing that um, Invasion used for their. Of of course. Of course. Can you swim through space? Uh, you actually can. Oh, no. <laughs> You're joking. It's, is it the same world? Maybe we got. Maybe we got like oh, a, no. a farscape, a far, a far verse. Listen, thing I was already Asian. asking questions about the launch of the space shuttle, and he's like in space flying, and he's got like the flames over, and I'm like, isn't he out of the atmosphere? They, they play kind of fast and loose with physics. And yeah. oh. that that reminds me, hmm. Alex, about the uh, t-shirt. Yeah with the swimming in space. I had an idea. Why don't you just do a regular astronaut in his astronaut suit, but with like a snorkel on top oh, and good. like swimmy flip flippers. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I can make that happen. And the speedo. Yeah, the speedo. Yeah. <laughs> on over top. Over, over, over top the- of it. <laughs> yes. Gotcha. That's my contribution. Okay. <laughs> and I should invasion underneath uh-huh. it. Um, yeah, that makes me kind of sad because that was the first thing I was starting to ask questions about, about the physics of this when he's flying in his little spaceship and there's like flames all around him. I'm like, he's in space. Why is he? There's no friction yeah. up there. What's going on with this? Well, well the, the friction comes in when he's skimming the atmosphere. So like the the uh, the experiment that they're doing is they're trying to use the friction of a planet's atmosphere and the gravity to accelerate a spaceship beyond uh, what is capable using regular engines in space. Which ties into the end of the show. Well, yeah, it's a setup and payoff because yeah. he does the same thing. But friction and speed are rarely connected. Yeah, I <laughs> well, I mean, it, 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 it's why there's like flames on re-entry where mm-hmm. like, you know, it's it's the atmosphere that's causing the, the friction. Uh, no, I know. But I'm like, if he wants to accelerate the ship, he should get out of the atmosphere, not drag him down into yeah. it. But, but the, you know, I like I did appreciate how they got us into the other side quickly. Of, of the universe within the first five minutes of the show. Yeah, they didn't drag he, your feet. He, he had a little talk with his dad. We met his best friend. He got the, the ring and we went through the, uh, the the Stargate and we ended up in a place where we don't know where we are. Okay, and, I do agree. And then they had the world's worst spaceship fight. So yeah, it was super cool. It's great. Yeah. I mean, for it? 1999, it was a pretty cool <clears throat> spaceship nah, fight. it really wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> they should have done models. Models are always better. I'm like, oh, this looks like uh, some last Starfighter was, bullshit. I mean, okay. I mean, they, they probably got uh, the the special effects house that did Lord of the Rings to like throw him a bone or something like that out mm, there. I don't think it existed at this point. Didn't I? Don't it? think Weedo was around. 1999. Did, yeah, yeah, it was. And was this 1999? Yeah. When, when did then, when did Lord of the Rings come out? I don't know. I don't remember. I don't remember. I think 2001. Was it? Mm. Anyway, yeah, it was early 2000. Yeah. Continue on. Okay. Expelled from the wormhole, Farscape 1 is suddenly shaken as three small spaceships streak past in pursuit of something. Crichton barely has time to adjust before the module is clipped by a fourth ship, which spins out of control and explodes against a small asteroid. The module is then pulled by an unknown force towards a huge organic-looking spaceship under attack by the smaller ships. Farscape 1 is drawn into the vast tiered interior, then released, and Crichton glides to a safe landing in the alien hangar. A small rounded yellow drone appears, just as an internal warning siren alerts Crichton to a more immediate danger, that the shuttle is on fire. John hits the canopy release button, catapulting the drone across the hangar as he fights to save the module. He succeeds, then turns to retrieve the module's canopy as the drone, now with one broken eye stalk, struggles to escape from under the canopy. It makes an odd electronic chittering sound as if hurt. Two similar drones quickly appear and forcibly guide John through the alien ship to a large open command center. (sighs) (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I, I, I almost forgot the uh, opening credits sequence music. 
Is. Oh, you were complaining about oh, the music all God, night. Oh, the music in this show. <laughs> really, I, I think that the opening credit song is pretty cool. It's weird. It's like, oh, God, boom, God, boom, God. Yeah. It, it's so weird. It's like a... like a. It's epic. I, um, mm -hmm. That's not what that word means. It's, it's super weird. What's wrong with you? I don't know. I really don't understand his love for this. I don't either. I don't get it. I but don't either. Um, it's okay. The uh, the ship clipping the wing of the other ship and then yeah. rolling and exploding. I have a lot to say about that. I, I was just like, man, that dude's a terrible pilot, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, but, but then did his, you go to pilot school, alien dude. But we get introduced to his brother later on, and uh, he's completely unhinged when it came to that. He's mm -hmm. like, you you murdered my brother. <laughs> He fucking yeah. hit you he on accident. He sat yeah. there on purpose <laughs> waiting for that guy to run into right? him. And that's murder. Goofy. Well, where I say terrible pilot. Mm. Yeah, that's why. Uh, oh, and then the little yellow Roombas. Yeah, they're cute. That was that was kind of goofy <laughs> and funny. You have one of those at your house. I do. You have yeah. a robot in I your have, house. I have a robot in my house. That's pretty cool. It cleans my floors for I've it. I've always wanted one of those, and but my, I, don't, I don't think I want one now. My kids abuse it. Because it's really The noisy. robot is going to attack. It's going to attack. It's going to yeah. eat one of my gonna kids. It's going to rise up. Yeah. No, for real. You're like the only person I've ever known that actually has one of those things. Really? Well, we used to have so, one. It so broke. when I we went over there yesterday, mm -hmm. and, and it's going around, all I hear is, <laughs> and it's like super noisy, and it would drive me crazy mm. if I had that in my house. So I have a mother-in-law that vacuums. So it's, <laughs> great. <laughs> it's, it's, it's great. Is she not noisy and annoying? Well, I'm not there when she does it, which makes it even better. <laughs> it's when it's I don't when... have a robot. I have, <laughs> I have a, a mother-in-law. Mother <laughs> That's fucked up, dude. Is that, is that fucked up? It's is a little fucked up. Is that not cool? She's a nice lady. I like her. All right. I like her a lot when she vacuums. <laughs> yeah. Any other thoughts on the rumors? No? All right. Continue on, Kitty. All right. In the command center of the ship, two aliens wrestle with control terminals as the ship shakes under the continuing attack. A squeak from a drone alerts the attention of the aliens, and one, a tall warrior-like alien, in red with tattoos, tentacles, and a mean expression, strides across the deck, grabbing Crichton by the throat and lifting him off his feet. The alien demands something of him in strange guttural tones. The other alien, an elegant bald blue female humanoid, looks on indifferently. John tries to explain that he can't understand what's being said, but is injected through his boot with something by one of the drones. The alien's language begins to make sense as they interrogate Crichton about his ship and its technology. John's confusion and apparent lack of help frustrates the warrior who throws Crichton across the deck where he lands in an undignified heap by the wall. The warrior then demands maneuverability from a third alien that he calls Pilot, whose image appears on a clamshell-shaped communications device, but the obviously stressed Pilot says he can do nothing while the control collar remains in place. The infuriated warrior yanks at the tubes beneath the control panel as a fourth, smaller, toad-like alien on a hovering throne barges past Crichton. He announces that he's discovered they were all being transferred to a lifer's prison. The warrior vows never to be taken prisoner again and continues to yank at the tubing, spilling fluids in the process. The toad alien floats across to Crichton and quietly tells John that he will look after him now if John will look after him later. Suddenly, the elegant blue alien announces that the code wall is dimming and the warrior's random vandalism has made a difference and the control collar of the ship starts to disengage. The warrior calls for everyone to prepare for starburst, but Pilot states that Moya has been restrained for too long. The warrior brusquely reminds Pilot that the starburst is their only option, and a buildup of electric blue energy ripples along the ship's hull, creating a vortex ahead of the ship that surges forward with Moya's starburst dragging one of the small, sleek fighters behind it. When they reappear, the warrior is demanding to know where they are. Pilot is unsure. The toad alien takes a dislike to Crichton and spits in his face, and a shocked John leaps to his feet and says, What's the matter with you people? For an answer, the warrior shoots out a very long tongue and knocks Crichton unconscious. I got a real hard time with this rip-off Klingon guy. I, 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 well, <laughs> he's got a weird design, right? It's a very strange he's design. Like, it's like... Whoever designed them was like, okay, we're going to take like things from all these different shows and just kind of like morph them into one weird angle. He's got a beard, but he's, he's got face tentacles. He's got, he's, and he's got, he's got head tattoos. tentacles. He's got tattoos. Um, he's got chest rings instead of nipple he's rings. He's got an outfit that Khan would love to wear. Yeah. Yes. And he, he has a frog tongue. A full chest and a frog tongue. He's yeah. I, I felt, you know what I did? I felt bad for the actor. Oh. I did too. Because this, this thing looks like it is a pain in the ass. 
Well, you can like acting, and you can like you. you I pointed out, yeah, like when he's talking, you can tell he mm -hmm. can't breathe out of his yeah, nose because he talks like this. He, he talks like, like yeah, goes, and, and I'm like that poor actor cannot yeah. breathe. Right, I can guarantee you he can't breathe with that freaking prosthetic over his face. He can't. He talks like he's got a plugged up nose. But and I, I don't want to like poo poo them no. for being original. No, because that seems kind of a dickish move. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm having a real hard time getting used to this guy. He's a he's a Klingon with Liku on his mm -hmm. head, but they're just short Liku. Yeah, they're not they're not like long Star Wars ones, but they're they're still there. He's it's, got like the Fifth Element Blue Lady tentacles. Yeah, yeah. 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 Fifth Element. Oh, this does kind of feel kind like of. a Fifth Element thing, huh? Yeah. I okay. That's. That help, that's helping me wrap my, wrap my okay. mind around it a little bit. And, I mean, I think we all just need to keep in mind that this is um, a pilot yes. episode. Yeah, 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 for sure. And that's what's kind of fun about it is because you can tell it's a pilot, right? Yeah. And there's just so much weird stuff. In what this I like, you mentioned the, the piercings on his chest. Yeah. So oh, yeah. Somebody in I the, was like kinky. Somebody in our chat mentioned that those were restraints put on him by the, his captors yeah. ah. and that was like oh shit that's kind of like a mark of of badass badassery i guess uh -huh. in a way like okay he used to be chained up literally through his bones like that's pretty, i, I kind of took it badass. as like oh he's into like some weird kink maybe that's you know. what i thought too one of the funny things about um farscape is that it, it does get kind of like weirdly sexual uh in a lot of different episodes um they're not shy about like you know i'm talking about like sexuality or orgasm oh the blue lady's doing mm -hmm. some stuff yeah in a minute yeah but but <laughs> she's one, like an orgasm priestess yeah but the the, the fourth sensation the fourth yeah. sensation. <laughs> <laughs> um, she's like yes yeah. i have felt it yeah <laughs> it's very strange. Uh, but but the cool part about this scene <laughs> is like we're basically introduced to like all the main characters in this scene so mm -hmm. we got john Crichton, we got uh, Zan, who's like the blue priestess lady. We mm. got uh, Dargo, who's like the low rent uh, Klingon. And uh, then we got Rigel, who's like the floating toad alien. And uh, there's only one more member of the crew, which we're going to meet in a future scene. But uh, this is pretty much the core cast uh, for the series going forward. And I just think it was like a really cool kind of introduction to all of them and, and the situation and stuff like that. We also get to meet Pilot. And uh, we get the name of the starship, which is Moya. Mm -hmm. And so, like, there's a lot of stuff going on in this scene that, uh, you know, basically sets up the rest of the episode. And I think it was done really well. So you mentioned earlier that these are all basically prisoners that have escaped. And they that they take over this ship because uh, there was a weird moment where, like, after they had gotten away from the battle, they started talking to each other like they didn't know each other. And I, I felt like that was a little bit of, like, an exposition dump for our benefit, but I wasn't, I didn't realize that they didn't actually know each other on yeah, in the so, show. Yeah, so basically the, the, the Leviathan starship that they're on, uh, Moya, is a prison transport starship. And what happened was uh, they were transporting these prisoners to a lifer colony. Oh, like Botany Bay. Yeah. And, and uh, so basically Dargo and Zahn were, like, in their cells, and Rigel somehow bribe someone because he's former royalty to get uh, the release codes for their cells and so he released everyone who was on the ship and they took it over and uh, mounted this escape that just so happened to coincide with Crichton showing up and they thought that because they didn't recognize Crichton's ship he might have technology that would help them in their escape and so they brought him on board and that was basically the setup for this scene. Like they aren't familiar with each other. They didn't mm. know each other until like this moment. And okay. They were forced to work together. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick break and we're going to finish off the second half of this episode. Stay tuned. If you want access to the entire episode, head over to saltingerclub.com and join up for our Patreon membership. It's only $5 a month, less than the cost of a cup of coffee. You guys can get access to four exclusive podcasts every single month. They're completely ad free, uncensored. And we have a ton of fun with our club members. Uh, we have a chat set up just for them in our discord and uh, we hang out with them on spaces every week we have a ton of fun so join up it's a great community and it's a pretty great value too five dollars not bad for a ton of content all right matt vader where can they find you on the socials you can find me at matt vader 74 on twitter and facebook and instagram and youtube and <laughs> getter and um you can find him at grouchy john's while his mother-in-law is back in the house yes. um, <laughs> I'm all over. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Jude, where can they find you? You can find me at I am Jude Juju on Instagram and on TikTok. And that's it. All right. Matthew Kadish. You can find me at Matthew Kadish, K-A-D-I-S-H on Twitter. Kadishbooks.com takes you to my Amazon page. And if you are a fan of Farscape, please comment because I need backup with these <laughs> Philistines here. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining us today on the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're brand new. And uh, 
Thanks for watching. Stay salty. Patrons, let's go.